Welcome back to another stock review video. In this video, we're looking at 1847 Gurukha Inc. Now, I hope I've pronounced it correctly. It sounds, in fact, like the name has a little bit of Netherlands history to it. That having been said, it is trading under the stock ticker GOED. And in this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the fundamentals. But before we go there, I just want to show you guys the new merch that we've got out. We've got a brand new GMA jacket and cap that's been out for a while. And myself and David have just got our first samples and we're pretty excited about it. So let us know in the comment section below, what do you think? Do you like it? Don't you like it? What are your thoughts and feedback? So without any further ado, let's jump in. Right, so let's dive straight into the fundamentals. The first thing I wanna draw your attention to is the market cap. We're looking at 176 million is currently where it's sitting. And then if we have a look here at the share price since inception. 872 dropping down to 182 so just a massive drop off on the price another area of concern got to look here at this profit margin negative 38.63 that's a big area of concern and also another area of concern is negative equity currently sitting at negative 30 million 316 thousand they do however have positive free cash flow 1404 and then of course we have to consider that there's no dividend on the stock so net free cash flow after dividend sitting at the same 1404 now if we come across here and have a look at the charts I just want to zoom in so I can show you guys a couple of all important things on the charts first thing we can see the share price hits its high at 1450 and that was around February March now if we come and have a look at the resistance levels on the charts, it has broken its resistance level at the previous low and has come down to the current low at 1.820, so $1.82. So a big, big area of concern on the charts as well. Definitely a downward trend. Now, let's go a little bit deeper into the statistics. Let's have a look at the numbers a little bit deeper. It's going to the key financial data and specifically, we're looking at the year-on-year -year stats. Unfortunately, they don't have a full three-year picture available for us. So from 2018, 2019, and then the trailing 12 months. So what we're currently looking at here is we're looking at number of shares outstanding. These have gone up a little bit. Total assets have increased. Liabilities pretty much gone up as well, but very much you know within what one would expect sort of in this one year mark but then here's the big problem look at the trailing 12 months we've got a big problem over here liabilities increase giving us a massive massive negative equity and go back on our two-year figure they were actually in the positive over here they were sitting at 3399 and currently pulled back to negative 13 million so definitely an area of concern on the books we have a look at total revenue total revenue pretty much more or less where it was on the two-year mark gross profit actually gone back a little bit even though it approved slightly on the two-year mark operating income net income and continued operations very much showing the same picture but what i want to draw your attention to here is this and this is super super important have a look at net income from continued operations in the last two years now these numbers specifically paint a picture related to the company's primary products and service is the company making money off its primary products and service and if we look here we can see they in the red at negative 21 million on the one year mark trailing 12 months negative 22 million and some change so definitely definitely problems in terms of making money out of its primary products and service and then if we come to operating cash flow we can see two year improvement and then slightly back in the last trailing 12 months and then this has to be noted strong free cash flow here in the year two mark definite increase of the two year mark and then one year mark big improvement you can see here massive improvement from this number over here and then a big drop off again so these are all major areas of concern so of course when we're looking at these key metrics and we're looking at key financial data like this we're really trying to establish a picture we're looking for three years of growth we're looking for three years of consistent revenue in the right direction as well as obviously looking for those number of shares to be going down so let's go and have a look at our 12 point checklist and let's see exactly how the stock is doing so the first thing we're looking at is the share price and what we're looking for specifically has the share price doubled since inception or at least within the last 10 years if the stock is older than 10 years and unfortunately that is not the case here so we unfortunately have to mark them down 
Then we're going to have a look at PE ratio. Is it below 25? Yes, indeed, the PE ratio is below 25, so we're going to give them a check mark over there. Then if we go and have a look at profit margin, is it greater than 10%? Remember, we showed negative 38% on the profit margin, so a huge problem there, so we have to mark them down. Then we're looking at assets versus liabilities. Do they have positive equity? And of course, if we go back up here and we look at the equity, we can see equity sitting at negative 13 million. So unfortunately, we have to mark them down. Then we're coming to the dividend cost. Now, purely on the basis that this stock does not pay a dividend, their dividend cost is less than free cash flow. So by default, they're getting a check mark. Then if we come down and we look at number of outstanding shares, total revenue, gross profit, operating income, net income from continued operations, which as I've mentioned, is a very important metric. We want to know that the company is making money from its products and services. And of course, these are in the red. And then also cash from operating activities and free cash flow growth. None of these, none of these have shown consistent growth for us in the last three years or any of the data that we've had available. Sort of been up and down all over the show and those are major areas of concern. So at this point, not looking too good for the stock, but if we come down and we look a little bit deeper into the buy sell scores, we can see sitting on a sell score of 83.3%, very strong indicator that the stock probably isn't a good purchase right now. And then the buy score sitting at 16.67%. But we have to always consider the off book factors because as so many people have rightfully pointed out in the past that when we're doing value propositions and we're looking at the value of a company, we have to take into consideration what the potential future value is aside from just looking at the past results. Now, of course, the way we do value investing, we look very strongly at past results, but we also do consider the off book factors. Having said that, where you have a buy score of 16.67% and a sell score of 83%, which is an extremely strong sell signal, we have to really have very strong off-book factor fundamentals to allow us to consider buying this stock or at least consider it in our purchases. So if we come here and we look at the industry projection price, we are looking at 523 by the analysts. I personally think that the industry projections are a little bit high for the stock. I think probably $2 is more reasonable. I think if you have a look at the recent pullback on the initial offering and to where it's standing right now, strong indicator that a lot of investors who jumped in early really backed up because there was a lack of fundamentals. Now, there's a couple of off book factors we need to discuss. The first thing I think that's really important to note is that the company was founded in 1951, traditional brick and mortar business, and they basically started switching to a pure online business model. They still have one physical store, but the majority of their sales are now purely in the online space. And really, I think this pivot, this, this could be a very crucial pivot for the company long term. This is a pivot play that could heal, it could, it could yield huge dividends. Nobody knows. It could massively, massively impact the price of the company and could definitely drive up that value. However, they have strong competition from competitors like Best Buy, Lowe's, and Sears. There are a number of other competitors. And I think their target of achieving 4% market share within the next two years. I think that's perhaps a little bit aggressive and just maybe slightly outside of reality. And then if we go and have a look at some of the things they've been doing, obviously we have to discuss the recent acquisition of Appliance Connection. And really what this is, it's two entities coming together, sharing brands, one providing some brands that the other doesn't have and vice versa. And so that could potentially also be a very good partnership. A lot of money outflow there. I know that at least 30% of the purchase, the acquisition is coming from stock. The rest of it is cash. So they are using stock to finance these deals. And of course, that is another area of concern. The current projections internally within the company, they're looking at 500 million in sales in 2021. Not 100% sure where they're going to get there. Uh, it would be a sharp, sharp increase from where they are right now. Only time will tell. And then I think the other thing to note is that obviously this stock and this company is limited to the US market. Currently only 48 states being served. And so that again is a little bit of a limiting factor in terms of the future long-term growth. Is this going to be a massive, massive stock down the line? Highly unlikely because it is limited 
to the US market and currently, as I said, only trading in 48 states. Then I think the other thing to take into account is that they are aiming to be the single biggest online retailer for appliances. Now, again, I think that is a pretty lofty goal considering that they have competition from Best Buy, who's well established, Lowe's and Sears, and a number of other very strong competitors who not only compete in online appliances, but have a much bigger basket to offer. And then, of course, we cannot short sell the impact of Amazon. So I think making this pure play in the online space is going to be very challenging for them going forward. And I think time will tell. So for all of those reasons, I personally do not think I'll be investing into the stock. The fundamentals aren't there for me. There is no trading record to give me any kind of indication that this is a stock that's worth holding on to long term. I think that the stock is maybe going to hit two bucks by the end of this year. I think it'll bounce around a bit. It might go up a bit, might come down a bit. I think two bucks is a fair price based on where the fundamentals are right now. And if that does indeed happen, that is a true margin gain of 9%. So still nothing to be sniffed at. But personally, I feel as resources go, my money's probably better invested elsewhere. And if anybody was asking me, I would give them the same advice. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the content, if you enjoyed the review of the stock, please give us a thumbs up. This really helps us. Uh, get these videos out there. And then of course, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button and make sure you turn on notifications for the channel by clicking on that bell, bah, bell icon. <laughs> Thanks so much. If you love money, creating wealth and want financial freedom, join our global money chart by smashing that subscribe button now and be sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the bell icon. And because I know you need a little extra motivation, Every month, I'm going to give away a signed copy of my book, The Money Secret, along with some really cool channel merch to our active subscribers. So smash that subscribe button now.